What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It is Brandon from the Two Piece Mandem, and welcome back to another Premier League prediction. This is Premier League prediction week three. Sorry, I was late for uploading the last one. I had a lot of things to do, but this time I'm well prepared and I've got my notes ready. So let's see what happens. And I don't know how long this video is going to be, but I'm just going to go over it. And in the Premier League last week, crap went down. Everything went down. Um, a few lucky wins, scraping games, grinding games out. Um, some games that should have been won by some teams, but now it's going to be week three and we're just going to talk about the new game. So, first game in week three, Friday at 8 o'clock, Aston Villa versus Everton. Now, Aston Villa haven't won a game yet. They are, I've literally taken two L's, one away which is acceptable because let's be honest, Tottenham are 10 times better than Aston Villa. But one at home losing against Bournemouth, conceding two goals in the first half, which I thought was absolutely disgraceful. And I just don't think that's good enough for Villa. And I thought they'd come into the season sharp, bright, signing all these players, but it looks like they're going to turn into another Fulham, signing all these type of players and still getting that ass dropped. All right, that's what it looks like. So essentially, they're against an Everton side who won their last game 1 0 against Watford at Goodison Park. So I don't know how it's really going to turn out, to be honest with you. I feel as though Everton are going to go into the game more confident based on their win last week. And yeah, it's just as simple as that, really. So my prediction for this game I'm not even going to say Everton are going to win it. I just feel as though Villa will come back because it's at Villa Park. So for this one, I'm going to say Aston Villa 2, Everton 2. I just feel as though those two teams haven't had the best of starts. But I think Aston Villa will come into it. They'll come into their own at Villa Park and they'll just kick ass on that day. And I think Everton will fire back as well in the, with the likes of bloody what uh, Richardson and do us. Uh, Sigurdsson as well. I think they'll just fire back and Jack Grealish and John McGinn will be on fire as well. Um, yeah. So, like I said, that's similar to Everton 2. Now, the next game, Saturday at 12.30pm. Norwich City versus Chelsea at Carroll Road. Now, how am I feeling about this one? We drew 1-1 against Leicester City. So I'm not overly that confident because I I felt as though we should have won the game. But when you look how when you look at how Leicester City dominated the second half, it looks as though they should have actually won the game. And that's what kind of annoys me because we got dominated in the second half in our own backyard by Leicester City, who potentially deserved to win that game. And we are so lucky that we even that we scraped a point from that. That it's bloody ridiculous. We're so lucky. Uh Norwich City. They're full of confidence right now, beating Newcastle 3 0. So how do you think I'm feeling with that with that um striker that's been banging in goals, Pookie? He's literally on form right now. I don't know how to freaking feel because on one minute I wanna say that my team's gonna win, but on the other hand I'm gonna say no it's gonna win. And it's it's a bit of ooh and ah, so I don't actually know. So for this one, I'm gonna say Norwich City two, Chelsea two. Just based on the fact that I'm not gonna um, per result, I'm not going to predict my team to lose because against Leicester City, we started off well. We were on the front foot, we started off really well. Mason Mount got his goal. I was gassed for him there, but we couldn't maintain it, and that's what kind of annoyed me. And when we weren't able to maintain it, Leicester City were just opening us up. And you see that header from Ndidi, that was just poor marking. And I knew that a goal was going to come. I knew it because with all the chances I had, a goal was coming their way, and I could sense it. I could bloody sense it. I was thinking in my head, they're going to score, they're going to score. And what happened? They flipping scored. Whereas with Norwich, they bloody battered Newcastle's arse into the freaking ground, being them, what, 3-1. Not 3-0, sorry, 3-1. So, it's it's a bit messed up, but like I'm saying, I'm going to go Norwich City 2, Chelsea 2. I feel as though we'll be lucky if we get a point, just, just based on the way we're playing. If we can get a win, that's bloody amazing. I really hope that we can get a freaking win. But I know Pookie's going to be on our arse, and that's the thing. So I don't know how our defenders will bloody be able to mark him, because he's going to be on, on his game. And, and, and it's at Carroll Road as well, with all their fans. Like, are you serious? Come on. All right. 
Next game, Brighton versus Southampton. Now, Brighton, let's look at their last game. They drew 1-1 with West Ham. So, with this one, it's pretty much going to be a very, very tough one. I thought, I, th I felt as though they were going to beat West Ham based on the fact that West Ham got um, rasped by Man City 5-0. Uh, for the Brighton, for Southampton one. Southampton lost against Liverpool. But to be honest with you, I think they deserved a draw. They deserved a point from that. Because, fair enough, Adrian made that mistake. He shouldn't have made that mistake. But Danny Ings was just close to equalising. If he got on to the end of that ball, then it would have been 2-2. It would have been a totally different complexion of the game. But, unfortunately, he didn't do that. So, you know what I mean? And Liverpool got off lucky and they won that freaking game. Uh, I'm going to say 2-2. I'm going to say 2-2 for that game. I feel as though Southampton start Danny Ings. They'll get off to a better start. And with Brighton and their new manager, I think they'll they'll do bits. Because I, th I think they won their first game uh, of the season. So let's just see how that goes. So I feel as though it's going to be Brighton 2, Southampton 2 for that game. Another game at 3 o'clock. Manchester United versus Crystal Palace. Now, yesterday, Manchester United actually drew against Wolves, which I was me surprised about actually was that no because in my last prediction I actually predicted 2-2 but it actually turned out to be 1-1 so yeah with Manchester United they still look like the same team they're not that good as as people thought just because they played us right people think oh this old man is bad listen right we were absolute dog wank in that one we were making too many mistakes and we weren't able to defend properly and we had a problem of going from tr from transitioning from attack to defense the only reason why Man United scored four goals against us is because they had quick players and they were able to hit us on the break very, very, far, very, very quickly. All right, that's it. And but they're not that good as people uh, make out to be. So joining against Wolves just proves it. If they were that good, they would have beaten Wolves. But Wolves are a hard team. I'll give Manchester United that. So yeah. So the fact that Wolves drew with Manchester United. Is, is a massive thing, but Man United, but Crystal Palace, I don't see any freaking hope for them. If they're losing against Sheffield United, then what hope do you see from them? Let's just be real. Um, playing with Zaha as well, and Christian Benteke, who pretty much did F all in that game. Let's just be real. I was watching the Sheffield versus or Crystal Palace game, and Sheffield United blew their freaking ass out the damn water by like, literally just up passing them in every um, flipping direction. It was just embarrassing. So for this one, I'm going to say. Manchester United 3, Crystal Palace 0. No. And just to ensure this, uh, listen, I'm going to tell you who scores. It's going to be Martial because he scored a banger against Wolves. Weak for I actually rate that finish. Who else? Marcus Rashford will score. And I'm feeling a bit of Jesse Lingard. I think Jesse Lingard will score as well. So it's going to be Martial, Marcus Rashford, Jesse Lingard. 100%. I think those guys will bang in the goals at Old Trafford for Manchester United. I don't see Crystal Palace getting one result there. I'm, I'll just be real. So I'm going to say Manchester United 3, Crystal Palace 0. So the next game at 3 o'clock, Watford versus West Ham. Now for this game, for this game, I feel as though Watford lost their game against Everton, like I said. So they're not really full of that much confidence. West Ham uh, drawing against Brighton as well. So I could say it's going to be a dead game or it's going to be a very, very tight game. For this one, I think there'll be goal goals galore because both of their defences are absolutely dot wank. So for this one, I'm going to say Watford 2, West Ham 3. Oh, I feel as though well West Ham will just score more goals than Watford overall and just get better chances than Watford, in my opinion. That's that's all I'm pretty much saying, and I, I can just I can just feel that. I can just feel West Ham scoring three goals. Watford not really doing that much at all. They haven't been, they haven't had such a bright start to the season like they, like they did last season, and they were full of energy. So yeah, for this one I'm gonna say Watford two, West Ham three. Next game is Sheffield United versus Leicester City. Now Sheffield United beat Crystal Palace one nil at their home ground. And Sheffield United played really football. They really, they're not really threatened by any of the Premier League teams. They're not, they don't really say, oh, that it's the big Premier League team. So we're going to play, we're going to go back a bit. We're going to sit back. No, they they go forward. They put their full backs forward. They want to play the football they, the way they want to play that football. No matter how big the club is, they're always attacking. 
of the team, always, always pressing. It's a very, very good team. Leicester City, on the other hand, did bits against us. I'm going to be honest, right? First half, we, we ruled them. Second half, they ruled us, all right? They were starting to get into the game when they had Madison, Jamie Vardy, uh, Ricardo at right back was starting to push forward as well. Uh, Tillemans was doing bits as well. Uh, and Didi, she freaking scored the goal as well. But the main assist, uh, the main like passer, well, the, I call him the main Fabregas in that Leicester City team was Madison. And the finisher was pretty much Jamie Vardy for that one. But I feel as though Leicester City will nick a win uh, against Sheffield United because Sheffield United, I like the fact that they like to press, but I don't think there's just enough quality. With Leicester City, there's a bit more quality in there, if that makes sense. So for this one, I'm going to say Sheffield United 1, Leicester City 2. Alright, so on Sunday, it is Bournemouth versus Manchester City. Alright, so Man City are first thing, Bournemouth are way out. Um, and for this one, let's, I'm going to be honest, right, Bournemouth won 2-1 against Aston Villa, alright, a good bit of confidence, I understand that, and Man City drew 2-2 against Spurs, do you think, alright, you know what, Man City, they're a bit behind now, so maybe Bournemouth have a chance, no, they don't, they don't have a chance, Man City are just too over um, overpowered, if anything, Spurs just got lucky, they got their chances and they put them in the back of the net, with Manchester City, they had lots of chances. They had one goal that was ruled out, I think that was from VAR, where it touched uh, Laporte's hand and it went to Gabriel Jesus' path and he took him to the back of the net, but it got ruled out. So for this one, I'll be real, I'm going to say Bournemouth 0, Manchester City 6, because I just don't see Bournemouth really getting a result there. I think Man City will just outpass them, outplay them out of the park and just basically take a massive dump on them, essentially. And that's pretty much what's going to happen. Like if if I'm honest, like that's essentially what's going to happen. I don't really see Bournemouth getting a result whatsoever. Manchester Manchester City are just too overpowered in the terms of Bernardo Silva, uh, Raheem Sterling, Sergio Aguero, Kevin De Bruyne, David Silva, Gabriel Jesus. Too overpowered. Man City are going to clock them six 0 Next game, Spurs versus Newcastle. Now for this one. Newcastle have lost both games. They lost 1 0 against Arsenal and they lost 3 1 against Norwich City. Tottenham Hotspur beating Aston Villa 3 1 and getting a very, very valuable point against Manchester City. And for that, for that alone, Tottenham are going to win. I'll be honest. I don't want to say that Tottenham are going to win, but Tottenham are going to win. Newcastle are a bag of dog crap. They thought with a 40 pound million striker that they'll do bits, but no. When you have a manager like Steve Bruce, you ain't going nowhere. Villa fans can vouch for me for that one. So essentially, I'm going to say Tottenham 3, Newcastle 0. No. I think Tottenham at home against Newcastle will just bury them to freaking death and will just batter them. Honestly, I don't really see Newcastle getting even a point from that because their defence is awful. Uh, Tottenham with the likes of Harry Kane. If they start Lucas Moura, they'll score more goals, but I doubt they'll do that. Uh, with the likes of Harry Kane, Hingman Son, I don't know if Daddy Ali's going to come back. Um, uh, Sissoko, Ndombele, I think that's his name. I don't know. I think that's his name. I don't even know. Um, either way, they're going to win 3-0. Let's just be honest. Let's just be real. They're going to win 3-0. Alright, next game, Wolves versus Burnley. Now, Wolves getting a valuable point against Manchester United and Burnley losing 2-1 against Arsenal. Uh, sorry, as I, as uh, Troops called it in the Premier League, uh, in the biased Premier League show. Uh, what, is it? what do you call Burnley? Oh yeah, Long Ball FC, because that's all they did against Newcastle. I mean, that's all they did against Arsenal. They just played Long Balls up the damn pitch. But... It did work to a degree, but Arsenal, to be fair, they handled it well. David Luiz and Socrates handled that well. And obviously, I slated David Luiz for leaving, but when it comes to long balls and the way he defended, he was actually pretty solid. So I'll give him that. He defended really well. So for Wolves versus Burnley, I'm going to say... For me, I want to say... But I just want to say a draw, but I don't think it'll be a draw. I think Wolves held their own. I think they played really well against Manchester United. Um against in terms of like Jota um I think it was his name Ra Jimenez uh, he played he played really well um the the defence line and the midfield played really well as well Diego Jota um I think Wolves will get will win this 
comfortably. I think they will win. And I have lots of confidence in them. So I feel as though it's going to be tough on Burnley. I shouldn't really say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. I'm going to say Wolves 3, Burnley no. I think Wolves will just have more quality than Burnley. Whereas Burnley will just play loads of long balls. And Wolves, because they're so well organised, they'll just be able to handle the set piece plays. Whereas with Wolves, they can just up past them and play long balls as well. And Rahamino will just, I think he'll just trip, creep in behind and score the goals. So yeah, Wolves for Burnley nil, but that's not the end, ladies and gentlemen. Because you know the big freaking fixture, and I had to leave this till the freaking end. I had to. Liverpool versus Arsenal at Anfield. The biggest freaking game of this week, ladies and gentlemen. Every time Arsenal has gone to Liverpool, they have been smacked. They've been battered. They've been stepped on. Every single time they've travelled to flipping Anfield. And I can't even remember the last time they got a point at Anfield. That's how peak it is, right? These two teams, looking back on their results, Liverpool beating Southampton 2-1, smashing Norwich 4-1, Arsenal scraping, and I say this, I'll say this again, scraping a win against Newcastle, and I wouldn't even say, it's not even comfortably, just beating Burnley 2-1, all right? These two teams are currently on four. They are currently on four. Now, I'm going to talk about Liverpool first, but talk about Arsenal. With Liverpool, they smashed Norwich. That's great. Against Southampton, they weren't even all that in the first half. They looked very, very sluggish. You could say it's to do with the UEFA Super Cup, but even then, in the first half, you could have been down. You could have been two goals down. You could have been two goals down. And that makes me think, okay, so when they get Champions League football, which is going to come in like next month, how are they going to, like, what's with the rotation thing? What's going to happen then? Because if you're playing a midweek game like that and then you've got um, a Premier League game on Saturday and then you're coming up with a sluggish start, if you're against a big team and you're coming up with a sluggish start, there's a possibility you can con concede two or three goals in just the first half. Because I'm watching the first half, I'm watching the post for Southampton, and I was wondering who was the freaking big team. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it was just ridiculous. Like, too many mistakes were being made, very, very sloppy. And one brilliance from that guy, Sadio Blood Clot Mane, open for scoring for Liverpool, and they didn't even deserve it. But just for his sheer quality, he cuts in and curls it into the top corner. And that, that was harsh in Southampton. Whereas if Roberto Firmino, he missed his chance, it was an easy chance. But then his second attempt, I think it was his second attempt, he cuts in, Sadio Mane wins the ball, gives, gives it to Firmino, Firmino skips past. Um, a bunch of Southampton players and puts it into the back of the net. A very, very classy finish. Adrian, don't know what he was doing. The geezer was lost because in the first half he did it and he got lucky. Second half he did it, he didn't get lucky. And that's what he freaking gets for uh, taking the piss, right? That's what he gets for taking too long and delaying his passes, right? He should just pass it out to the right back. I think it was Alexander Arnold. Should have just passed it out to him. But no, he took his time and then Danny Ings intercepted the ball and went in the freaking net, all right? So this one is just going to be a mad one. Now we're going to talk about Arsenal, all right? I can't cuss them off right now because they did they did beat uh, Newcastle 1-0 and they did beat Burnley 2-1. I like the players in terms of like Nicolas Pepe and uh, Danny Salabas as well. Uh, Aubameyang scoring his goal, I think that's two goals for Aubameyang as well. Um, this season, Lacazette, a very, very good goal actually, very, very good goal from Lacazette. Had his back towards the Burnley defender and just, and just puts it into the back of the net with his weak foot, so actually not making the goalkeeper. But with Arsenal, I just feel as though when it comes to these big teams, they will just capitulate badly. If they let the first goal in, they'll just capitulate. And that's the thing. And I don't know if Socrates and David Luiz can hold that defensive line against Sadio Mane, Firmino and Mohamed Salah. That's what I'm thinking. I don't think Maitland-Niles will be able to handle, handle Sadio Mane. I think Sadio Mane will just skip past them with ease. I think with Arsenal, they need to be at their best. They have to be at their very best. But even if they're at their very best, I still, I still think they'll struggle against Liverpool. I just don't see Arsenal getting a point at Anfield. I don't see them getting a point at Anfield, right? Like, I'll just be real. I just see Arsenal just capitulating in that game. I don't think they'll play the, they'll be able to play the type of football that they want to play. I think they'll get um, pressed down too easily. I think Liverpool will just outpass them during the first half. Arsenal will try 
start and get into the game, but I just don't see Arsenal really getting a result, really. So, my final result for this one, I'm going to say the bottom of my heart, Liverpool 5, Arsenal 2. I don't see Arsenal winning that game. I think Liverpool will absolutely smack them to bits because every time Arsenal have, have gone has gone to Liverpool, they've been smacked. Fair enough, they may have had Mustafi or not high-quality defenders there, but I know that first goal goes in, Arsenal will capitulate and they're just not good enough to really compete against Liverpool. They may have Nicolas Pepe, they have Danny Salabas, they have all these good players, but Liverpool, it's, it's, in terms, it's just in terms of mentality. It's all up here. And Liverpool, let's be honest, they're winners, right? That's what they are. Liverpool are winners, as much as I hate to say it. Liverpool are winners. They have a bare mentality in terms of in terms of Arsenal's mentality. And I think Arsenal will just slack off. I think they'll just slack off. I think they won't be able to handle the intensity from Liverpool. And I believe that they will just lose 5-2. Five, five goals. I think it's going to be Salah's going to score two goals. Mane's going to score two goals. And Henderson will score as well to make it the fifth. And for Arsenal, I think it will be two goals. I think it will be a goal from Aubameyang and a goal from Nicolas Pepe. But still, they'll only get the goals off the counter-attack for, for Arsenal. Whereas Liverpool will just outplay them to the freaking core. So that's just basically it. And yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed this, don't forget to leave a like on this video. Smash the subscribe button as well. I'm going to be doing another Premier League prediction week four next week. And yeah, make sure you add our um, social medias. Links will be in the description. I'll see you guys in a bit. Peace.